How's your energy, Southern Arizona? It is now time for the Friday Football Fever, one of the most in-depth high school football shows right here in the Crazy AZ. Good evening to you. I'm Paul C. Carlo. And I'm David Kelly, still six feet away from my partner in crime <laughs> as we continue this social distancing thing and bringing you, though, the most in-depth high school football show you are going to find in the old Pueblo. There are nearly two dozen teams in southern Arizona, and all of them taking the field tonight. But a homecoming matchup with Desert View High School hosting Saguaro got canceled after the Cougars had to back out of the game because of COVID conditions while Douglas High School couldn't suit up against Thatcher because of injuries. But hey, Jaguar coach Robert Bonillas decided to take Desert View to Thatcher to fulfill both the team's needs to play ball. Also playing ball, Paul, Micah Mountain High for the first time at the varsity level. And if you think you can beat the Bolts, that's fantasy football. It's a new team wearing Carolina blue, but an old veteran coach in Pat Nugent. First quarter, how about the jet sweep here to wide receiver Jonah Garcia. Garcia going to find the opening, makes a nice cut here, and takes it for 24 yards. This was a game dominated by defense all night long. Octavio Vidro Jr. striking like a thunderbolt there in the backfield. And then this next kid is a young star, Case and Colbert, flying through the gap for a TFL. He's just a 10th grader. Well, actually most of the team is 10th graders, except for quarterback Jaden Thornton. He's a 9th grader making a young mistake there with the interception. Augustin Chiang takes it away for Coolidge, but on this night, Micah Mountain's defense just a little bit better. How about some more Case and Colbert, a transfer from Kentucky. That kid plays fast. The Thunderbolts' first game as a varsity club is a winner 13-7 over Coolidge. And here's the Chief Operations Officer of the Barstool Sports Arizona Bowl, Del Arvallo, as Ironwood Ridge would lead South Point 3-0, and he'd see Trayson Borgay hit Michael Aguirre. First down, South Point, but then the defense of Ironwood Ridge steps up. Jesse Hernandez forces the fumble, and Jordan Thomas will recover. The Nighthawks get the ball right back, but South Point's Michael Aguirre is back in the mix, this time on defense with the interception for South Point. Then, how about Trayson Borgay getting the ball to Dalen Goodman, and South Point is working its way into field goal territory, and in the kicking game, Owen Lynch is absolutely money, honey. The field goal would tie things up at three, but after a left eight, South Point goes on a run in the second half, breaking up 34 points in a row. The Lancers win 34 to nine. Malachi Ifan and Choi on the road at Empire. The Chargers trailing 17 to nothing, trying to get, keep it that way anyway. Jacob Choi here, number 30, all over. Ravens quarterback Miles Kenny, he's hyped. Kenny, though, later with a dump down to Ace Weisenberger. He's a 10th grader. 24 yards here to the red zone. And then check this run out by Jake Lambert. He's carrying one, two, three, four, five guys all the way down to the one yard line. He would score 24 zip empire. Ephon finding some daylight here. He gets 10 yards. And then Jaden Mendables is going to get it to the big guy. Daniel Lady, remember him last week? More 44 love, recovered that fumble. 15 yard reception there. Choyolo just could not string enough of those types of plays together. Miles Kenny, the deep ball to Jacob Puentes. How about that catch right there? One more time. Ravens heading into that fall break. It's that time of year. Like Kings, they went big over Troy. All right, from Vail, Arizona, let's head northwest to Flowing Wells as the Caballeros are hoping to put an end to Marana's winning streak. Coach Phillip Stewart and Marana. They have taken Arizona's football world by storm. Get this. Coming into tonight's showdown, Marana had outscored its last two opponents 109.